give you glory for all you've brought me true and now I'm ready for whatever you want to do I'm moving forward to follow after you and now I'm ready for whatever you want to do for your presence it's an open door we want you lord like never before your presence is an open door so come now lord like never before we sing it one more time for my heart your presence is an open door we want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now, Lord, like never before. In every season, your grace has been enough. And I'm believing that the best is yet to come the cross before me my hope on things above and in you jesus the best is yet to come your presence is an open door we want you lord like never presence is an open door so come now lord like never before one more time say your presence is an open door we want you lord like never before your presence is an open door so come now, Lord, like never before. Oh, I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now for your presence is an open door dear lord we want you lord like never before your presence is an open door god so come now lord like never before Breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. Oh, 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 I know. Breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God made me a promise and it won't stop now. He said he'll never leave you. He said that he wouldn't forsake me. You walk beside me, and that is all that matters. The sun will not smite me, and the moon it will not hurt me. The flood won't sweep, for the Lord is my anchor. He'll never leave you. He said that he won't forsake you. He'll walk beside you. And that is all that matters. The sun will not smite thee, and the moon it will not hurt you. The flood will not sweep you, for the Lord is your anchor. Hey, you are the covenant keeping God. We know who you are. You are the covenant keeping God. You've never. 
have helped me, God, your Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, 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 the covenant keeping God. Yeah. You are our God, and your covenant keeping God. What you say you will do, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yeah. You'll never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. <laughs> you walk beside me. And that is all that matters. The sun will not smite you. And the moon, it will not hurt me. That's what you said. The flood will not sweep me. For the Lord is my uncle. Yeah, you are the covenant keeping God. We know who you are. You are the covenant keeping God. What you say you will do, our God, the covenant keeping God, the all sufficient one, the covenant keeping God, Jehovah Rapha, my healer, the covenant keeping God, my protector, my preserver. My shield and my buckler, yes you are. Good morning, Pentecost House. And good morning to all of our friends watching and listening online. We're starting a new series this morning on relationship. And I'm going to start with marriage. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we ask for your wisdom. I ask you for the understanding and the auction to speak your word with accuracy and with power. You are the author of marriage. You are the only one who can speak to us, who can teach us, who can instruct us, who can correct the errors we are in when it comes to marriage. God of the universe, we lean entirely upon you this morning and in this series. Come with us. Go before us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Marriage doesn't solve problems. Marriage doesn't create problems. Marriage simply reveals problems. If I'm a perfectionist, my marriage will reveal it. If I'm fearful and insecure, my marriage will reveal it. The problem is not marriage. Marriage is amoral. Marriage is neutral. Marriage is like money. Money is good. Even though you can put it into bad use, you can also put it into good use. Money takes on the nature of the person who has it. Many times also, the marriage reveals the weakness and the strength of people in it. Marriage is good. If I'm bitter, if I'm controlling, if I'm angry and manipulative, my marriage will simply reflect and reveal those things. Marriage does not create problems. It does what? It reveals problems. Do you know the problem with my marriage? Do you know the problem with your marriage? You. The problem with my marriage is me. The problem with your marriage is you. Because marriage is amoral. Amen. Marriage won't turn my life into a picnic. There's a lot of things marriage cannot do. But marriage does have a God-designed function that is far more important than you think. And so this morning, we're going to be speaking about why marriage matters. Why marriage matters. And I'm going to be sharing with us five reasons why marriage matters. Number one, for the connection of men and women. God created and designed marriage to connect men and women. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. The Bible says it's not good for the man to be alone. It says, I will make a companion who is right for him. You know, in creation, I want to think that when God made Adam 
He didn't immediately create the woman. I think God studied Adam for a while and allowed Adam to interact with every other creation and decided that, look, it doesn't look like Adam is going to be fine with any of these ones. Let me sit down and look at Adam critically and create somebody who is right. There's somebody who is right for Adam. And that is a woman. Hallelujah. I want us to read a passage in the scripture, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, verse 6 to 9. I want to read from the New Living Translation. But God's plan was seen from the beginning, which means God has a plan. God's plan was seen from the beginning of creation, for he made them male and female. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two, but one, let no one separate them. For God has joined them together. There are three points in that scripture that we read that, that I want to just bring out for us to understand this morning. Number one, marriage is God's plan. Marriage is God's invention. Marriage is God's idea. Marriage is God's plan. God invented marriage. Number two, marriage is between a man and a woman. There's nothing like a man and a man. That's an aberration. Marriage is between a man and a woman. If it's not between a man and a woman, it is not marriage. <laughs> marriage is permanent. Since they are no longer two but one, let no one separate them. When God brings a man and a woman together in marriage, God is asking us not to separate them. So God designed marriage and he built three things into it. Number one, marriage is God's plan because we have seen it. Number two, marriage is between a man and a woman. It's between an Adam and an Eve. It's not between an Adam and a Steve. Marriage is permanent. Hallelujah. So number one, for the connection of men and women. God invented and ordained marriage to connect and join a man and a woman in an institution called marriage. Number two, for the multiplication of the human race. Marriage is for the multiplication of the human race. We are here today. You are here today. I'm here today because some people got married. They got together and they made babies. God populated the heart through marriage. The institution of marriage is what has taken Adam and Eve and turned it to 8 billion people today that we know, that we see. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. I'll read verse 27 and 28a. New Living Translation says, So God created people in his own image. God patterned them after himself. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and told them, do what? multiply and fill the heart. Malachi chapter 2 verse 15. I want to read the message translation. God, not you, made marriage. <laughs> His spirit inhabits even the smallest details of marriage. God cares about the smallest details of marriage. God cares about the smallest minutest details in your marriage because he made marriage he cares about what you do with your wife. He cares about what you do with your husband. He cares about what you do with your children. He cares about how you treat each other. A spirit inhabits even the smaller details of marriage. And what does he want from marriage? Children of God. That's what. So guide the spirit of marriage within you. Don't cheat on your spouse. Be sincere. Don't cheat. That's what God says. So marriage is for the multiplication of the human race. Hallelujah. Number three. Why marriage matters. For the protection of children. A lot of times children need a lot of protection. All the time actually. 
We need to protect them from the storms of life. There, there are three major changes that every child must be protected from. Number one is actually changes. Today, we have the social media. We cannot allow children to just go to social media and do whatever they like, especially when they are so young. Otherwise, social media will shape their philosophy for life. That is the responsibility of parents. Parents are supposed to communicate their values to their children, not social media. Social media is a no-go area for children until they are adult and they can make wise decisions, until they can choose between good and evil. Let's not unnecessarily expose children to social media. That's a change. That's stormy. Number two, failure. Nobody wins all the time. When children fail, they need a family to assure them that failure is not fatal. In some families, you cannot fail. When you come, number three, they will ask you, is a person number one and two monster? But failure is part of life. Nobody wins all the time. Children must be able to interact with the people who love them the most when they experience one form of failure or the other. Number three, rejection. When children are being rejected by society, they must not be rejected at home. In some home, unless the children are good enough, they are not accepted. That's crisis for children. So God ordained the family to ensure that every child is, is protected from the storms of life. And I said those storms can be categorized into three. Changes. The world is constantly changing. The family is there to show them from unexpected sudden changes. The family is to shield them from failure. When they fall, they need to understand that no single fall is fatal, is finer. Every broken dream can be rebuilt. They need to learn that from the love of parents and people around them. Rejection. Some people will look at you and say, your head is too big, your hand is too big. At home, they need to tell you, your head is too big because there's only one of you and God loves you that way. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. The Bible says two are better than one. Because why? They have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10 says, For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. The level says again, If two lie down together, they keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a tree called is not quickly broken. Hallelujah. God ordained marriage for the protection of children. Every child needs a perfect environment of safety for their protection. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of us, everything we know about marriage, we learn from home. And those are primary teachers, everything they learn and know about marriage, they learn from home. Many of our forefathers and grandfathers were not Christians. They came from an occultic culture. So if care is not taken, many of the things we learn from, about marriage, we learn from people who have never really loved and obeyed God with their lifestyle. Marriage is designed and created by God. If you want it to work, you have to do it God's way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number four, why marriage matters? For the perfection of our character. For the perfection of our character. Proverbs 18 and verse 1, I'm reading from contemporary English version. It is selfish and stupid to think only of yourselves and to sneer at people who have sense. One of the greatest evil I've seen in the world today is selfishness. I think that selfishness is the root of all kinds of evil. Selfishness is the root of rape. Selfishness is the root of racism. 
Selfishness is the root of harm robbery. When we think about ourselves alone, we care less about the other person. And that's why we live in a broken world today. Selfishness. Marriage is a lifelong course in learning to be unselfish. Because once you get married, you can no longer think about you alone. Me. No. Marriage was created by God to teach me to be selfless. Once you get married, you can't always do what you wanted. You have to imbue into your relationship commitment. You have to think about the other person. In fact, many times, you have to sit down with the other person and rub minds and decide what you are both going to do. Sometimes, you make a decision that is not exactly what you want, but that's what you want as a family. And every participant, every t- member of the team will have to go by the decision of the family. It helps to imbue in us character. And number five, for the construction of society. Marriage is a fundamental building block of every community. Marriage is a fundamental building block of the church, of our state, of the nation, of society and culture. If you know anything about history, you will realize that where marriages are strong, culture is strong, society is strong, and vice versa. Hallelujah. Marriage is good. Marriage is amoral. Marriage is not a problem. When things happen, you say, I hate marriage. It's not marriage. It's me. It's you. Many of us are waiting to get married so that our life becomes paradise or night. Marriage will not turn your life into a picnic. Marriage matters to God because God designed it, God invented it, God created it, and with specific purpose in his mind. And this morning we have looked at a number of them, and we said number one reason marriage matters to God is because marriage is for the connection of men and women. In God's plan, men and women need each other. In God's plan, Every child should grow up in a home with a father and a mother. The father has his role. The mother has his role. The children, as they become of age, they have their own responsibility. Because God is a God of order. He said number two, for the multiplication of the human race. God planted a seed in the garden. Adam. And he gave Adam and Eve. And it caused them to begin to reproduce. And today, we have 8 billion people for the multiplication of the human race. For the families to produce godly children. God wants godly children. And he doesn't want infidelity. Number three, for the protection of children. He said every child should have a family where they are protected. They are protected from changes. They are protected from failure. They are protected from Rejection. These things will happen. Anybody can reject you. It's just their expression. But God made every one of us. Psalm 139 says, God made us. He saw us while we were yet in the move. We were a masterpiece. We were his handiwork. We were top secret. We were made like no other. We are perpetually rare. But some other people can look with an evil eye and say we're not good enough. We need a family to back us up at such time as say, you're good enough for us, you're good enough for God. We need a family where we're protected from the storms of life. Where the predators cannot prey upon us because our family people love us and they are alive. And they know that there are a lot of changes going on around. And they cannot leave a baby to solve the internet unwashed, uncensored. Number four, for the perfection of our character. Say marriage is the cure to selfishness. The day you get married, you know that you're no longer the only person. If you remain selfish, you're going to destroy the institution of marriage. 
And we say lastly, for the construction of society. The family is the smallest unit of society. When the marriage is strong, culture is strong, society is strong, the nation is strong, the values are strong. I want to close with Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. It says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And how did Christ love the church? Christ loved the church and he died for the church. Husbands, do you know how to know when you really love your wife? When you love her so much that you are willing to die for her. Hallelujah. Christ loved the church. He gave his life for the life of the church. When we love our wives, we should be willing to die for our children and die for our spouses. And the Bible commands wives to respect. Submit. Listen. Listen to your own husband. Listen to them. Men are not naturally loving agents. And the Bible says, husbands love. He's teaching them to do what naturally. A man is a conqueror. He wants to go out and conquer his career. Conquer everything. Make money. And God says, slow down. Spend time at home. Build at home. Love at home. I pray that your marriage from this day will begin to fulfill that plan in the heart of God. I pray that the spirit of God will inhabit your marriage. And order your steps. And bring about orderliness. The accurate arrangement of things. In your life, in your marriage, in your family. In the name of Jesus. I pray that the Holy Spirit will expand this truth in your heart. In the course of the week. Until we come again next Sunday. To continue from this series. Stay safe. God be with you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Trust you have been blessed this morning. And I pray that the love of the Lord permeates your relationship, your marriage, your family, and that bitterness does not take root in your relationship in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. It's time to give, and the details will come up on the screen right now. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you because from you all blessings flow. Out of the abundance you have given to us, we have come to give this morning as a mark of love, as a mark of our commitment to you, as a symbol of honor, we give for the furtherance of your work here on earth. We pray that our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings are acceptable in your sight in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So tomorrow, Monday, we'll be live on Diamond 101.1 FM for prayer on radio. Time is 8.30 a.m. to 8.40 a.m. You don't want to miss it? Get ready to connect and get blessed. Wednesday, we'll be live on all our platforms for tuning to God's channel. It's going to be a great time of Bible study and worship. Tell somebody about it. God bless you. God keep you. And his face shines upon you. Amen. I give you glory for all you've brought me true. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow.